Thanks, Gilbert. Uh, and thanks for having us, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, this morning. My name is Satya Nagarwal. I'm the CEO of Think Research. And what we do, we are, a, we are a software company. And what we do is we get new clinical evidence and new clinical knowledge into the hands of doctors, nurses, and pharmacists through enterprise relationships. So these are relationships with these are, these are uh, uh, licenses with clinics, with hospitals, with entire governments who then deploy our solutions to those doctors, nurses, and pharmacists so they can practice up-to-date medicine. As Gilbert said, our mission is to organize the world's health knowledge so everyone gets the best care, okay? So essentially, new evidence, new knowledge to the bedside so patients get better care. What we do, what we, uh, what we are to our clients is an essential data service for their clinicians. Uh, Gilbert mentioned a few of our of our stats. Um, we are uh, on track for a, a run rate of approximately ninety one million Canadian dollars uh, by the end of fiscal twenty twenty two, and just uh, again uh, more than three. 100,000 clinicians, that's doctors, nurses, and pharmacists that use our solutions across now more than 13,000 uh, facilities that license our solutions. And those facilities are in Canada, the US, um, Ireland and the UK, the Middle East and Australia. Uh, because we're a technology company, we've got good gross margins approaching 50%, good organic growth, and um, and again, we are uh, we are very much um, uh, an inter international company at this stage. Uh, myself, uh, my name is Sachin. Again, I am the CEO. I've been here since the company was a startup uh, about twelve years ago. Um, uh, I studied uh, biochemistry, following which I practiced law. I did my law degree and my MBA degree at the University of Toronto, and um, and then joined uh, after practicing law for a number of years. Joined Think Research as a startup company, and I've been here ever since. As we've grown from about five people when I started up to now more than five hundred people, um, and now being listed on the Toronto. Uh, venture exchange. So uh, it's been a good journey for us. Uh, um, I won't spend too much time on our board of directors, but one thing I will highlight is that Dr. Eric Hoskins is the uh, is the former uh, the chair of our board. He is the former Minister of Health here in Ontario, Canada, and the longest serving Minister of Health. So we, uh, of course, have very deep relationships um, here with, with government um, in Canada. And as a consequence, we've really, uh, that's what's really helped us to grow uh, quite significantly over the last number of years, right? So why do we do what we do? Well, it's because it's getting very hard for doctors to practice their trade, right? If we think about how medicine was practiced 20 years ago, right? our doctors knew just about everything that they needed to know to practice, right? They were able to keep all that knowledge in their heads. Today, there is an explosion of new information and new knowledge that is being produced uh, on a daily basis. In fact, the amount of medical knowledge is doubling every few months. Right. It's getting harder and harder for doctors and nurses and pharmacists to keep on top of all of this changing information. Right. Some studies show that it can take as long as 17 years for a new best practice to become common practice at the front lines of care. So what's happening is there's a bigger and bigger divide between best practice and best evidence and what we're actually practicing in, in, um, at the front lines of care, right? And so with this growing divide, solutions like ours are becoming increasingly necessary. We get the new evidence and new best practice into the hands of those clinicians so that they can practice their, uh, their, their trade. And as I said earlier, there are uh, today approximately 300,000 clinicians that license our solutions 
across 13,000 facilities. And then what we do is we, so we, we get, we are the top prov uh, uh, provider of, for example, education um, in the, in, uh, and connectivity, on connectivity solutions in Canada and in other places where we um, offer our solutions. And then what we do is we collect all of that data informa and information on how clinicians are using our solutions and we uh, license that data back to research clients and pharma clients so that they can uh, so that they can produce new evidence uh, on top of it right uh, we are building if I can use an analogy we are building to healthcare what Bloomberg is to finance just like Bloomberg is a necessary, uh, an essential data service for finance professionals. I'm sure many folks on the line um, have some experience with Bloomberg. Similarly, we are building to healthcare what Bloomberg is to finance. Okay. Here's an example of some of the clients that license us. You may, as a, if, you're, if you're Canadian or American, you will recognize many of the types of facilities on the left-hand side that license our solutions. Uh, organizations like the entire province of Ontario, the province of Saskatchewan, big giant organizations like Shoppers Drug Mart, Amazon Pill Pack. These are the types of organizations that use our solutions to make sure that they're practicing up-to-date medicine. Then in terms of who licenses our data on the right-hand side here, you can see it's organizations like Roche, GSK, Moderna, uh, Sanofi, and so on and so forth. So we, we really do become essential uh, both to the healthcare system, but also to research clients, okay? Uh, because I'm short on time, I'll, I'll skip a couple of these slides, but um, in terms of our growth strategy, where are we going next? Well, what we're working on is, gr number one, growing our user base. So we want more licenses and more users per license. So we want to grow that number of 300,000 clinicians to 350, 400,000, and so on and so forth, so that we become, we uh, reach a bigger and bigger number of clinicians. Number two is we want to create new types of content and license new types of content so that we become more sticky and more necessary to our clinical audience, thereby increasing our revenue per user, okay? Number three, we want to monetize the access to that clinician user base, to those 300,000 and growing um, clinical users, which is a very valuable audience. Their data is valuable. Access to them is valuable. And we want to monetize access to those, um, to those uh, users directly. Okay, so those, those are going to be our key uh, methods of growing, right? In doing so, we will, of course, be expanding our solution footprint. We will be strengthening the types and depth of data that we acquire uh, in, terms of our, uh, in terms of our users. And then, of course, we will be adding new services and solutions to the platform, either organically or through further acquisitions. And, and last year we did four acquisitions just by way of example, okay? Um, in terms of uh, just some, some financial overview, what you can see here is that in 2021 um, audited revenue, uh, Canadian dollars, we were about 47.8 million, okay? And this year uh, analysts expect us to be around 91 million. That's a consensus estimate. Um, and you can see the mix of it there in between our, the, uh, on the right-hand side, you see we have our uh, technology uh, and software licenses to those 300,000 users. And then on the left-hand side, you see clinical research. Those are the organizations that license our data. And you can see the, the, the mix between those two. So really significant growth, 21, uh, fiscal 21 to fiscal 2022, um, each of which is, is calendar year end, okay? Now, uh, going a little bit deeper into our quarters, you can see uh, Q4 and Q1, um, Q1 having ended uh, March 31st, 
You see our um, our overall revenue at its uh, uh, highest ever at more than 20 million Canadian dollars for Q1. And we expect that to continue to grow over the course of 2022, right? Again, good gross margins, and we have room to strengthen those growth gross margins as we go. Now, really importantly, we're a public company. We're a relatively young public company, okay? We are trading lower than all of our peers we have a in terms and this is just our canadian peers if you compare us to our american peers there is uh, even a greater gap so we think we are a cheap stock we think there's a really big divide between um, where we should be trading and where we are trading right now and we think it's a really significant opportunity for investors who get in at this uh, very very low share price um, uh, to to really uh, reap some rewards. And I will say, uh, if you look at our, our online filings, you will see that I myself am buying uh, stock in the market because of how inexpensive it is right now. So um, with, uh, with that, I do have some additional slides that you can obtain afterwards that show our, our comps and uh, balance sheet and so on and so forth. But perhaps just to conclude, I'll go right, right back to uh, what I was saying at the start of the presentation. Right. Uh, medicine is getting harder and harder to practice for our clinicians. Right. 20 years ago, a doctor could keep the necessary information in their heads. Today, we know that is not possible. Right. Is there any doubt in your mind that 10 years from now or 20 years from now, every single doctor will be machine aided in some way in how they treat patients? I'm sure the answer to that is, is a resounding yes. Of course they will. Well, if you believe that, then you believe in our fundamental thesis, right? Which is that the knowledge-based part of healthcare, software companies that get new knowledge and information and help doctors to make those decisions are going to be uh, a key part of how healthcare is practiced in the future. And I, I think that goes without saying, and, and maybe I just give you a couple of additional stats as I conclude, right? Globally, we spend about $10 trillion US per year on healthcare. 70% of that is labor. That's the doctors, nurses, and pharmacists that practice healthcare, right? 70% of that, that's $7 trillion a year, right? And in the coming decades, there is going to be a massive shortage of doctors, nurses, and pharmacists. We already see it uh, here in North America, in Europe, and in other places around the world where there is just a significant shortage of labor to deliver healthcare. At the same time, more and more of the world is getting more wealthy and is becoming a part of the middle class and will be consuming more healthcare, right? So the only way to deal with that problem is to make our labor more efficient, right? Is to make it easier. We're gonna re require software and solutions that are, that are gonna help drive decision-making, faster decision-making, faster outcomes so that we can rely less on the labor. So that's why we believe we are absolutely in the right part of the healthcare sector as, uh, as the world starts to change over the next number of years. So with that, uh, Gilbert, I'll turn it back to you to see if there are any um, questions. Yes, uh, Sachin, we've got a few here. The first one from Lloyd uh, is asking, uh, without your data or products, how would healthcare companies be, be conducting their businesses today? Well, just like they used to before, Gilbert, what they would do is they would um, they, they would rely on what they learned in, um, in medical school. They would Google the answers to the best of their, uh, of their capabilities. Every, every person watching here has gone into a doctor's office and seen the doctor Google the answer right in front of them, right? <laughs> we, we've all seen it, right? And so, you know, is, is that the method you're going to rely on? Is that the way that we're going to get best practice into their hands? 
you know, um, I would argue that there's just too much information out there to, to rely on something like Google. We, we need better methods. And, and I'll go back to that Bloomberg analogy, right? Bloomberg has built a platform that synthesizes all that financial information in a digestible way for the finance professionals to be able to use. Similarly, that's what we're doing for healthcare. You talk about Google. There's, well, this applies to a lot of other sectors too. That has trouble with that. that you know, people just, even professional, relies on Google these days. Just, exactly. <laughs> amazing how it is. You can, you just a uh, bit crazy here. The second one here is: um, Is your solution applicable to uh, markets like in Asia, possibly? Yes. Yes, uh, uh, some of our solutions are already being consumed in um, in Asia by individual doctors who are reaching out. For example, our um, our medical education solutions are uh, sporadically being used in in um, in in Asia. Uh, they're already being, uh, but we think there is much greater applicability today. Our solutions are primarily English and French. We intend to add additional languages over time, and the Asian market is is definitely uh, of interest to us. Okay, the next one here, how will you be able to um, efficiently or, or how fast can you grow your user base? Uh, listen, you can see our revenue growing uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I can say, well, we haven't published numbers to the market yet on our user base growth. I can say that it is growing uh, faster than we had we had uh, anticipated, and is outpacing our organic um, growth rate, our organic revenue growth rate. So it's 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 a good pace. And, and the fact of the matter is, um, uh, if you if you um, if you think about that user base, there there is no more valuable user base. With healthcare is the number one industry in the world. And the people who practice healthcare, they are the number one target for access from pharmaceutical companies and so on and so forth. So it is a very, very valuable user base. And this is the final question from Jing Lu. He's just asking if your evaluation, current valuation right now below most of your peers and why is that? What needs to be changed? It's way below our peers. It's, it, there's a significant divide between where we are trading and where our peers are trading. And I think that's a number of factors. One is um, we are a young, we are the youngest public company of our peers, right? And that that has a, there's just awareness, right? We, we, there's a, there's, it takes time for us to, to mature on the public stage and for people to know our story and to know what we're up to. Right. And so I think that's a, that's been a big part of it. Last year, there were also, we had some lockups that came off. That uh, resulted in uh, longtime shareholders uh, who were exiting, right? And that had an, an impact. So, so those factors are now all behind us, right? So we think, uh, we think really now is the time to, uh, to get into the story uh, and come in at a very low share price. When we went public, we were at $4.65 and our trailing revenue was 16 million Canadian dollars. Right, we're now at a run rate o- over eighty, and and we'll be hitting ninety by the end of the year, right? And and we're trading at uh, you know fifteen uh, percent of that share price. Quite a interesting, uh, good entry point for people to follow for this stuff for sure. Thank you, Zajin, for your time with us here today. And thank you for having us. Uh, always a pleasure.